Apple just wrapped up their fall iPhone event where the company unveiled several new products, including a new dual camera iPhone 11, which comes in six new colors, the triple camera iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max, and an Apple Watch with an always-on display. Now that in addition to the company giving more details on the upcoming subscription game and TV service. Now I walked away from the event being excited by all the new products and services that Apple has lined up for the fall, and I cannot wait to tell you about it. Let's get started. First up, Apple Arcade. Now, originally unveiled at Apple's Spring 2019 event, Apple Arcade is the company's new subscription service that's coming to the iPhone, iPad, Mac, and Apple TV next Thursday, September 19th. The subscription service costs a surprisingly low $4.99 per month and is shared by everyone tied to your family sharing account. Now, this is really one of the benefits that Apple was touting since it introduced Apple News Plus last year. There's no ads. There's no in-app purchases. It's available in over 150 countries, and the games can be played offline without internet connection. Now for five bucks a month, this is really a win-win for most people, especially given the fact that Apple Arcade will have a catalog of 100 games and new games are gonna be added regularly. Now the service is gonna be available for a, with a one month trial at sign up and your devices will need to run iOS 13, iPadOS, or Catalina in order to have access to Apple Arcade. Next up, we got more details on Apple's long discussed, often really dismissed subscription TV service, Apple TV Plus. Now Apple TV Plus is gonna launch on Friday, November 1st, and quite surprisingly, the crowd went wild now, $4.99 a month, this is really a good deal, especially when you compare it to the likes of Netflix, whose base plan starts at $9.99 a month and doesn't even include 4K streaming, or even comparing it to Disney's upcoming streaming service, Disney Plus, which launches later this year and is priced at $6.99 per month. Now, Apple's gonna have more than a handful of shows available at launch, and new episodes will be delivered weekly opposed to all at once like Netflix. Now, somewhat surprisingly, Apple's including 12 months of Apple TV Plus for free to anyone who buys a newer refurbished iPhone, iPad, or Mac this holiday season, which basically drops the cost of either of those products by $60. Now, next up was the iPad and iPad OS. Now, there's a new 10.2 inch classic iPad to replace the 9.7 inch that was launched maybe in 2018 at the education event. The new 10.2 inch iPad is still priced at $329 for consumers and $299 for education. It carries an improved brightness, slightly better display resolution, and adds a smart keyboard connector over the 9.7 inch predecessor. Now, other than that, Really, the features are kind of carry the same. It has the same internals as the previous model, including the A10X. It has a lightning port, which also means it's gonna support the first generation Apple Pencil. Now, the 10.2 inch iPad is available to purchase now and it ships to customers by the end of the month. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see a comparison with either the iPad Pro, the iPad Air, or even the iPad Air 3. Now, additionally, Apple announced that iPadOS will be available on Thursday, September 19th. Now, iPadOS is the operating system specifically designed for the differentiated experiences that only the iPad can offer, which is gonna include split screen, windowing, the ability to use a mouse, you get advanced keyboard shortcuts, and a host of other features that are all in my iPadOS review. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications so you can be one of the first to watch when that content drops. Now, next up there is Apple Watch Series 5, which I'm really the most excited for. Now, this year, many people are saying that it didn't carry the same flashy upgrades as last year's Series 4 did, but I think in the grand scheme of things, the Apple Watch Series 5 will be just as important. First, the Apple Watch Series 5 is going to feature an always-on display that maintains the same 18-hour battery life thanks to the new display technology and the custom display controller that allows for a variable refresh rate. Now, second, Series 5 is going to feature all-new compass component that can be used to read elevation, incline, as well as longitude and latitude to help with directions and navigation. Now, as a side note here, this to me looks like Apple's getting ready for indoor navigation, where spatially speaking, it's much more challenging to find an object. Now, that in addition to the Series 5 getting 32 gigs of storage up from 16 gigs on the Series 3 and Series 4, a second generation heart rate monitor, a third generation wireless chip, which is, you know, W3 to manage Bluetooth 5.0, which is also new, as well as the ability to automatically call emergency services when you're outside the US. Now, this is actually kind of a big deal. If you fall, you get hurt, you have to go ahead and hold in the side button to activate emergency services. It's gonna figure out your location on the, obviously on the cellular model and call whatever the emergency services number is in that country. Now, additionally, Apple's leaning hard into individualization and customization and now allows you to order any Apple Watch Series 5, you know, watch finish with any band, really giving you the ultimate in customization to choose what works best for you. Series 5 is available in two new materials for the edition series. It's gonna, you have titanium and you have, and they're bringing back white ceramic in addition to adding black ceramic, which looks absolutely killer in my opinion. Now, more broadly, watchOS 6 is bringing new health features, including cycle tracking, noise monitoring, and the app store to your wrist, while it's being available on every Apple Watch from the Series 1 on up. You can order the Apple Watch Series 5 starting today for $399 with GPS, or you get cellular for $499, it's gonna top out at over $1,300 for the ceramic edition. Just a little too rich for my blood. Moving on to the main event, Apple announced a trio of new iPhones and much like last year, they have the same core features, but they're really differentiated by functionality and finish. 
iPhone 11 is going to replace last year's iPhone XR, which Apple claims to be the best-selling iPhone. Now, personally, I think the iPhone 11 is really going to be the default iPhone for majority of people out there. It hits the price point, it has the features, and it's available in a number of colors. Now, let's talk about what didn't change first. The iPhone 11 still has the same 6.1-inch liquid retina LCD display. I know many people are mad it's not OLED. It has 326 pixels, it has true tone, it supports a wide color gamut, 12 megapixel lens, it has haptic touch, lightning port, and face ID. All that's the same, but that's where the similarities really stop. The iPhone 11 is gonna be available in six new colors, black, white, product red, a really good looking purple, yellow, and green. Now that means that coral and my favorite color blue just didn't make the cut this year. Now the iPhone 11 is gonna add a second ultra wide camera that's f2.4 aperture, and it has a 120 degree field of view, which is kind of how far the camera sees. Now, two new portrait mode effects are being added to that and the ability to take portrait mode photos of your furry friends. Now, it can capture extended dynamic range video up to 4K60 on both of the second lenses, in addition to supporting cinematic video stabilization up to 4K on all three lenses. Now, you also have the updated 813 processor. You're getting Face ID, where it's gonna work in multiple orientations, which includes laying on your side, according to the commercial from Apple. You get Dolby Vision HDR content, Dolby Atmos for spatial sound, surround sound, and it gets one hour extra battery life over the already great battery life on the iPhone XR. Now, all this starts at 699 for 64 gigs, which all things considered, you can now get 128 gigs for 749, which was the same price as the entry level device last year. And for everyone out there holding on to their older iPhone 6 and you know, kind of newer, Apple's aggressively marketing good trade-in values for you for older iPhones as incentive for you to upgrade. Finally, there's iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I know, horrible names, I keep mixing them up myself, but let's see if this device is really worthy of the Pro moniker. The iPhone 11 Pro is available in two new colors. The first is gonna be midnight green, which looks really nice, and the second is going to be gold. Hold on a second. We have gold this year. It's just a different color gold. There's lack of consensus inside of Apple what color gold is. All right, thanks for the update. Well, there you have it, folks. One color that's new and one color that's just slightly different. Now, all colors have a frosted finish to them, which I like, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, talking about the Pro moniker, we have an upgraded display that Apple's branding the Super Retina XDR. Horrible names. The device is gonna be available in either 5.8 inches or 6.5 inches for the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max, respectively. The display can deliver over 800 nits of brightness during typical usage and over 1200 nits of brightness when viewing HDR content. Now, it's still 458 pixels per inch. Now, to me, that's pretty freaking bright. And when you consider the iPhone 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max are able to squeeze four or even five hours more battery life compared to the iPhone XS and XS Max respectively, that is impressive. Now, adding further credence that the device is worthy of the Pro moniker, Apple is implementing three 12 megapixel cameras on the back of the iPhone 11 Pro devices. You have an ultra wide, a wide, and a telephoto, and they're paired and calibrated at the factory, allowing the cameras to switch seamlessly between them without needing to refocus or set exposure. This is actually really impressive. Now, the combination of all three lenses allow for up to four times magnification with with zero loss in quality. That is really impressive, Apple. Plus one. That in addition to being able to capture three different streams of simultaneous video from the three back cameras and the front camera allows for greater flexibility if you're someone who likes to shoot video on their iPhone, which I really like to do. You're getting all the benefits that came with the iPhone 11, including smart HDR, slow-mo, selfies, 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 whatever, dynamic video stabilization, night mode, and you're getting an 18 watt fast charger included in the box. Yes. But it's still lightning and not USB-C. <sighs> Well, you can't have your cake and eat it too, folks. Now, as I said before, I've been less than impressed with the camera quality coming out of the iPhone XS Max. And I've really been looking forward to the upgrade that the iPhone 11 was gonna go ahead and offer, with pricing being consistent starting at $999 and $1099 for the Pro and the Pro Max, and that part of the iPhone upgrade program, which allows me to go ahead and basically turn in my phone at the end of my first year. I would be foolish not to go ahead and trade in my iPhone for the new iPhone 11 Pro. But for the professional who doesn't already own an iPhone XS, maybe you have an iPhone 10, or you have one of the Plus devices like the 7 Plus or 8 Plus, I think that this is a pretty decent upgrade as long as you aren't holding out for a device that has Touch ID, like my friend Rob. Either way, all three of these devices are available for pre-order on Friday the 13th at 5 a.m. Pacific. Thank you, I do not have to get up at two in the morning. And the devices will be in store on the following Friday the 20th. Now there are several more features including the U1 chip for precise location tracking and better water and dust protection, which all come with the new models and I'll go into those features in the hands-on full review videos. So make sure you're subscribed when those videos drop. Now I am Mike and this is Tech247 TV. Hit like, hit subscribe, I will talk to you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching my video recapping all the exciting events from Apple's iPhone announcement. I would love to know from you, what are you excited about from this announcement? Maybe it's a new iPhone, maybe hell, it's just the fact that you wanna go ahead and you know get another year out of an older device. Let me know in the comments below. 